Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, it's nice to have you here with us today. Uh, my name is Harriet Willett and I'm the NATEP program director and I work with the team of technology managers who provide the mentoring support to the NATEP program. So the NATEP program in brief or this phase of it is 10 million of grant funding for project beneficiaries over four calls from, over, uh, from 2019 in the autumn. So we've had two of those calls already. We've got another two calls um, about to happen. One of them autumn is open now in uh, the Innovate UK system and the next one is open in the spring. The maximum project duration is 18 months and the maximum project size is uh, 300,000k. Uh, we provide mentoring as well as um, <laughs> um, we provide uh, mentoring as well as funding for those projects. Um, it's important to mention now and we'll mention it again even if you're looking for the project that is uh, to do a project in the autumn 2020 call which is open now in the Innovate UK system um, we would recommend that you come and speak to us anyway we've still got a few weeks that we can actually talk to you uh, about your proposal into the system so we still have time to give you some help and advice and support before that submission into Innovate UK the spring 2021 call we're accepting proposals now and you can come and speak to us now and we will take you through our longer process or we can give you some more support there have been some changes for any of you who have known NATEP before NATEP used to be 150,000 pounds worth of grant and that was 50 50 funding uh, Christine if you could just uh, press the next button I'll show what the changes have been it's next there we go thank you um, so from the 1st of October, any Innovate UK projects that have been funded, um, so through the ATI programme and our programme, they've changed the funding. This is applicable for a 12 month period only. So it's the call that's currently open in Innovate UK and the spring call 2021. Micro and small companies can have 70% funding, medium companies can have 60% of funding and large companies can have 50% of funding. As with the previous two calls of NATEP, universities can have 100% uh, funding effectively, it's 80% of full economic costs. It used to be based on the grant, it's now the project. So that means that on a £300,000 project, a university or catapult uh, would have about £90,000 worth of funding and the rest would be going to the um, industry partner. As I've mentioned, NATEP is unique because we do provide the funding so much as you'd see in the ATI programs and others, but we also provide the mentoring. And the mentoring comes from that first time you have the concept of a project that you want to develop. We'll help you with your bid proposal, we'll help you set up the project once you've been awarded funding, and we'll help you manage the project as you go through that project delivery. And we'll also help with promoting your project at the end using our brochure, the website, and our contacts with the Department of International Trade and other things. Uh, the difference between a small or medium enterprise, it's the EU definition. So I think a small company, I can't remember, hopefully some one of my TMs will hopefully look up for me and then jump in in a second and tell you the definition. Uh, but it's the EU definition of small, micro and uh, medium sized companies. It's um, less than 50 people had count for small and under so 10 million euro turnover. And then 250 for medium sized companies and under 50 million turnover. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. And thank you, Nancy. Um, next slide, please, Christine. Okay, so it's very important that the lead company on a NATEP project must be an SME. That's an absolute given. You cannot um, lead the company if you're not a small, micro or medium sized company. You have to be in a collaboration, so there have to be two partners in the project, but the collaboration can be two industry partners or three or more, but you can also collaborate with an, uh, an academic organization or a catapult. It must be industrial research, which means that we're looking at TRLs from about three to about six. Um, you must be looking to uh, exploit that activity in to do the project and exploit it in the UK because this is UK government money. So they're looking to benefit the UK economy. It has to have an application in civil aerospace, but that means that if it's dual use, you can still do the project, but it has to have a clear um, application in civil aerospace. 
and it has to be in line with the ATI strategy. The ATI strategy is available on the ATI website, but actually, if you're not sure, come and speak to us. Our technology managers uh, are Fine. fully aware of the um, yeah. three strategy and are uh, able to give advice about how you fit in with the ATI strategy. There are some more criteria. It's all available on the next slide. Thank you. So as I mentioned, we've updated this slide recently to show that you can come into us at various stages of the process. So if you have an idea, come and speak to us as soon as possible. Our long process um, takes, uh, there's an outline proposal that we're accepting now, and we will help you over time develop your proposal and really get it to the best that it can be. But if you come and speak to us, we may be able to fit you in later on or help you uh, submit into the Innovate UK process. It's quite complicated trying to get it all onto one slide. Um, so we do recommend that you come and speak to us. But as I've mentioned, that autumn call 2020, that's open in the Innovate UK system now. If you go to Innovate UK and look, it up, look up NATEP, you'll find it there open. That closes uh, in mid-November. The spring call 2021, we're looking for outline applications now. The outline application is should only take you a few hours, maybe a day to fill out, but you can get a really good idea from that outline application if it's worth spending the time and energy to go into the full proposal, to go into that Innovate UK system. And so the reason we do that is that you can have a really good idea without spending too much time and energy to, to do that proposal. We do encourage you to engage with us as early as possible to maximize the potential of your project. And the technology managers will help you throughout the process. They're very experienced. Many of them have been doing this for a decade or more. So um, they really are able to give you good advice at any stage of the process. But do come and contact us. As I've mentioned, what is unique about NATIP is that mentoring aspect. And so I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Stephen Stanley, who's going to tell you more about his role as a NATIP technology manager in the process. Uh, James, just to answer your question, a university cannot lead a project. I'm going to hand over to Stephen. Hi, good afternoon. Um, I'm Stephen Stanley, one of the NATIP technology managers um, based up in the Northwest. Um, Christine, if you can move to the first slide, please. Um, so I am one of 10 technology managers. Um, we are distributed around the UK. We have um, representatives over in the Northeast, um, the Southwest, the Southeast, and also in the Midlands. And we come from quite a wide variety of networks and technical backgrounds. Myself, I'm from materials and optics. Um, we have people um, that specialize in procurement, some defense um, contractors, and also composites and other materials. Um, we all have a big experience of some kind of government funded um, project management, whether or not that be small Innovate UK projects or large um, inter-nation um, projects. If you can move to the next slide, please. Um, so really, what does the mentoring provide? Obviously, you've been aware now uh, how it's introduced the funding aspect. What does the mentoring um, produce? So the, the best um, introduction for the mentoring is as a critical friend. And the idea is that we, we are a friend to the project. We, we are here to really see the projects succeed in every way that we can. And that's every partner within that project. Um, but at the same time, we are there to be critical. We are there to uh, pick you up where we believe you should be working further in one particular aspect or where there is uh, maybe um, project management aspects that are failing or really where things need to be brought in line. Um, so we can actually bring them together. That It's um, unbiased um, friendship and support to the project, but also that unbiased um, critical um, aspect. Please, if you move to the next slide. Um, so in terms of what the mentoring provides, and this is at the particular, uh, at the initial outset, so really when a project approaches us, whether or not that comes into the info at NATEP or whether it comes directly from um, discussion with one of the technology managers. So we can help with initial formation. Um, so there, there was a question about whether or not a university can lead. No, they cannot, but universities can approach the technology managers and say, we have this technology, we're looking for a lead partner. Um, we do quite a number of that one. At the same time, if we have lead partners trying to develop a technology and they want introduction to other research organizations or other partners with specific skills, we, within our network and within previous NATEP projects, we are able to bring those in quite quickly. 
Um, and also with the end users, the end users are quite key to ensure that there is demonstrable exploitation within a project. So we have contacts within our NetApp team um, direct into whether it be defense related into BAE or whether it be Airbus, Boeing, et cetera. So we can actually make them into the primes, but also into tier one suppliers within the UK and also globally. Um, we can also support with the structure of the project. So how that's actually structured between the partners, exactly how you bring your project plan together um, in terms of efficiency, but also from the risk mitigation. It's an important part of the application process to get the risks understood and the project plan outlined. So we can help and support with that one and, and also ensure that it is up to the standard required from Innovate UK. Um, what we also offer as part of the NETEP route is um, independent review. That's from industry panels. Um, and also technology managers, we will provide you an initial review before it goes to the industry panels. And then at the industrial panels, if they are there in person, we are there as the friendly face that you do know already and can introduce and support um, you on that panel. Um, but also if it is remotely, we support you through that process as well. And then we provide you with that feedback from the panel and support you into that final application onto the Innovate UK IFS system. Okay, if we move to the next slide, please, Christine. Sorry, Christine, if we move to the next slide. Oh, sorry. Um, so what does the mentoring provide post-award? So after it's actually been awarded, um, we are notified of the projects that have received that one. And we engage with you as soon as that notification has been provided. So before there are Innovate UK monitoring officers involved, we will come and discuss the project with you. We will discuss with you the requirements of NATEP and Innovate UK, um, go through some of the details that they will have sent you, um, and the documentation, we have some templates, we understand their templates, we can support you in what is required in terms of completing them. We can support you with some of the IP aspects, but also the risk management that you will be required to update prior to actually starting your process. And also things like your collaboration agreement, um, uh, signing of the documentation with Innovate UK. So we will start that one from the very first day and try to make contact as soon as possible. And then further on, um, as we continue, you'll have your engagement with Innovate UK, with their monitoring officers. You'll have your financial claims to submit um, and also your quarterly updates. We support you with that aspect. So what you can claim, what you cannot claim and how you go through that. Um, but also in terms of uh, the process support for the quarterly reviews. So what is required within the quarterly reviews? Is it up to standard in terms of the technical input and the budget management input? So we will review them before you have them and also support you in the meetings as well. Um, we can support with the end users. That's quite a, a challenging aspect, um, particularly where you have a, a very small SME. We have engaged with quite a number of micro entities um, and they are dealing with the likes of an Airbus and we will there be there to be able to support you and act as an independent that we can actually try and support how you interact with the end users, but also if they're asking things that are unnecessary within the project, we can help. Um, also in terms of guidance, we can guide you when we start believing that, that maybe the project delivery is not quite in, acting efficiently or whether or not the risk management needs to be picked up. So we can identify them again through this critical friend um, concept. And we also support quite heavily within the whole NATEP group, the exploitation. Um, that's not just the planning, um, but also actual exploitation events. Um, so things like this, such as webinars, but also once um, possible, we will do in-person um, events. We get in quite a number of slots at multiple conferences to be able to present um, your technology. And also we set up independent NATEP um, events to wider tier one and prime end users. Um, and also we continue that even after the project. So we will continue to bring in um, introductions to your projects um, and also to other new partners. Okay, next slide, please, Christine. And one of the particular aspects um, of being a technology manager is that every company you engage with and also every project that you engage with, you require to deliver bespoke support. It, it is in, dependent upon the exact company, the partners, the arrangement between them partners and the technology that's being developed. Um, whether or not that be a single person entity or whether or not be a medium sized company with an excess of 100 people, that support that we can provide is quite different, whether or not it be support in actual project management or whether or not that is support with Innovate UK procedures. 
um, varies quite widely. And with the technology itself, who it is that you should be engaging with, what kind of end users. So our support is tailored to you. It is certainly not one size fits all. Um, and we don't have a list of activities we undertake with any one partner. This is support required with you um, to the technology manager. Okay, so now I would like you to, to hand you over to Tom Alton. He's one of the previous um, beneficiaries of NETEP um, to go through his project and his experience with NETEP. Uh, Thank thanks, Steve. Um, so I, I'm just here uh, as a bit of a, uh, an example. Uh, firstly, I'd like to say that this presentation is perhaps not as technical as I would have liked it to have been. Um, the nature of our NATEP project meant that um, our IP is, is kept under close wraps between ourselves and the uh, end user, the OEM. But I think that's a perfect opportunity um, to highlight um, what NATEP can do. So in the dissemination of your project or the dissemination of your results or whatever it happens to be that you're producing, you don't always have to, um, to display it and, and reveal your cards. Uh, I, I understand personally that um, SMEs, the, ba uh, the battle for IP is, can, can sometimes be fierce. So it's, um, the NATEP are very good at, um, at, at helping you protect that as, as well should, um, should you need to do that. Firstly, um, what is, uh, you know, if, if you're sat there and you're thinking, um, how is how is NATEP, uh, is, is your company applicable for, for NATEP? Well, uh, yes, um, MAR ourselves, uh, we would probably uh, defi uh, be defined as a, um, a medium enterprise, but um, we were founded in 1932 and our primary business is, is nothing too sexy. We're a, a high alloy, high performance alloy uh, stockist. We stock things typically like uh, MAR aging steel, TIE 64, um, IVAR, etc. Uh, and our customers are based in the uh, oil and gas, aerospace, uh, a variety of, of, of sectors. Our annual turnover is sort of uh, around 20 million pounds and we employ between 60 and 70 people a year. Uh, what what uh, we were doing with NATEP is, is uh, we have some other uh, spin-off groups. So um, we are looking at a pseudo additive manufacturing technique. Um, so we had this idea, uh, we developed this idea and um, uh, our MD was able to go to Steve, um, whom we've been working with and, and say, oh, Steve, we've got this idea, we'd like to um, try and shoehorn it into industry. And Steve was very good at, at getting us some uh, industry partners. So right off the bat, you know, NATEP were there trying to help us. And I think that uh, highlights sort of how NATEP operate. Um, the government, there is a real drive to sort of improve UK manufacturing and, and this is, uh, you know, an excellent initiative to do that. So, so NATO are always there to really try and help. Um, next slide, please. So a, a little bit about myself then. So um, my name, yeah, as Steve said, is, is Tom. Uh, I'm the I'm modeling and simulations engineer for this uh, startup idea that we've got with inside the business. Uh, I joined in 2019, so I've just uh, been working for a little over one year, one month. Um, I was fresh out of university, uh, so I had a background in uh, aerospace materials. Uh, and I, it's important to note that I joined partway through um, this particular NATEP project. Um, so, so if I was to summarize that, um, you know, new, new inside the business, relatively new inside industry, and you might be sat there thinking, I was certainly sat there thinking, how the hell can I be of any benefit uh, to NATEP? But actually, um, because of the framework, uh, the strong mentoring system um, that NATEP have in place, it's actually a pretty good project for, for me to start off. So perhaps uh, as an SME, a, a micro company, or, or you know, on the larger side of a medium enterprise, you might be uh, thinking, well, yeah, that we've got some employees who need a bit more experience. You know, we've taken on some, some graduates ourselves or some apprentices. I would say that NATEP has been a really good project uh, to get uh, sort of a sink, uh, sunk into. Um, next slide. So um, what, do, what did we achieve? So as I said, I, I can't digress too much uh, the technical information, um, but w with this sort of no um, novel uh, manufacturing approach that we had, um, it, it's important to remember that we're not, we're, 
with, within the NATEP context, we're not working against uh, sort of industry giants, as, as Steve like, rightly said, and people like Airbus or Bo uh, Boeing, you know, but we're working uh, with them. So uh, NATEP is, the, is that a uh, very good bridge between um, the OEMs and, and uh, SMEs. So um, it, from NATEP, we were able to offer uh, a really enticing um, project um, largely because that was based upon the, the, the uh, funding recuperation, so the 60%, 50% for um, medium enterprises. Um, the project uh, mentoring, as, as Steve uh, said, was uh, very beneficial for not only ourselves as, as to sort of develop and grow, but also um, our OEM was also able to place other people inside that project whom would also benefit as well. And uh, what was really really critical for both of us um, and for ca carrying on the project outside once we finished our NATO um, project was the impartial and fair evaluation con and conducted at the quarterly review meetings. The um, framework which uh, we were conducting because when you're drafting your application uh, you, you have to state how you, your key milestones etc you might expect to do um it was uh, as as the project developed and evolved we were able to go through some teething problems uh, the the nice thing about being engaged with this natec project was that we're not we weren't going uh, at it alone so there were certain things where we uh, came across a issue with uh, machining our parts um, we were struggling to get um to find people to machine it with confidence but because of we were inside again um, the framework and the context that uh, the contacts that uh, NATEP have at their fingertips, we were able to find um, uh, a machine shop who could uh, who were happy to machine our components and, and take that forward. And that's been very crucial in um, developing those relations outside of the project. Uh, as a consequence of that, we've been able to do some more work and, and further our research. Um, Next slide, please. Uh, again, so um, it's it's not, holistically, it's it's not just what did the project and what did the company uh, achieve, but you know you, you might also want to take the approach of of what did you achieve uh, personally as as a team, as an individual. Um, so uh, the, t technically, um, Ma had um, limitations of of uh, simulation software. We weren't sure about, but again, because of uh, the the research and the understanding of the project, uh, which our OEM came in with, um, they were very sort of um, ha happy to engage with us about about these teething problems and, and sort of collaborate together. So we weren't what we what we were offering with our NATO project was n not. Um, the complete finished article, uh, you know, polished solution, but it's something which was rough, ready around the edges and something that they were very happy to take forward. So if you're sat here with a thing, you've got a project in mind about uh, you'd like to find someone with, but you, you know, you know, it's not complete yet, then, then I'd say that's, that's a perfect opportunity to use the NATEP um, grant to the best of your abilities. Um, as, as well, if uh, there were certain limitations of, of our own manufacturing capabilities, because of, uh, again, uh, sub how the subcontracting works with inside NATEP, we were able to introduce other subcontractors into the project. Um, I, I think as well, this, this highlights um, the f uh, flexibility that, that NATEP um, and, and your uh, technology managers uh, understand is that each uh, manufacturing is, is not a sort of discrete and you don't have, um, nothing ever goes to plan. And um, because of, of, of the, the digressive nature of, of work, et cetera, um, it's, it's very, your, your technology manager will always be there to help you uh, adapt your project and, and to, to move milestones around so that you can uh, reach the final goal. Personally, as I said, um, what, what I was able to do was, uh, was to develop my presentation skills and, and public, public speaking. Uh, it gave me experience in organizing and chairing meetings. So because of uh, the transparency that you ought to have with uh, your um, industry partners, 
you have quarterly review meetings not only to update yourselves and, and, and the partners inside the project, but also NATEP, and that's what you get reviewed against. Um, pr producing presentations and, and talking with that is, is a wonderful opportunity to improve such skills. Uh, you have, a, um, I developed other soft skills such as uh, effective work management and, and breaking down the tasks, you know, part of what's required inside the project. Uh, and as I said, it's important not to be the finished article. So you don't have to be the next uh, Jeff Bezos or, or Mark Zuckerberg or whatever, um, you know, Elon Musk, because the whole point of NATEP is, is to develop you. Um, so hopefully by the end of it, we'll all become the next Elon Musk. Um, and, and critically as well, we've from, from NATEP, we've developed um, close uh, working relationships, professional relationships with um, contacts inside our OEM and, and subcontractors that have come as, as a result of this. So, yes, um, it's, uh, we've, we've um, benefited fantastically from it. I think that's, that's it from me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tom and Stephen um, and Christine for clicking on the slides. I saw a couple of questions pop up in the chat. If you've got any questions, just pop them in there. Um, uh, Sean McGovern asked me to just let you know that cross-border projects, historically in NATEP, they had to have funding from uh, Scottish Enterprise or Invest Northern Ireland. Uh, that doesn't happen anymore. It all comes out the central pot, which does make it easier for the project. So if you are based in Scotland or Northern Ireland or Wales, um, it's the same pot as everyone else, which does make it simpler um, for anyone who has experienced the challenges of that. Um, we were also asked about the split with the OEM. Uh, tier one cannot have more than 30% of the project. Um, and uh, no one can have more than 70% of the project. So if you were a tier one with a, a micro or a small or a medium company, it would, they would have to have 70% and you would have to have 30%. If you've got more companies than two in the collaboration, obviously that changes a bit, but the no one can have more than 70% and a large company cannot have more than 30% of the project. A university cannot have more than 30% of the project either. I'm hoping that answers the question. Um, and there was another question on whether an SME is eligible to apply to NATEP if they're on another ATI program. Yeah, absolutely. You are entitled to apply to and uh, be funded in NATEP. The, the key is that it mustn't overlap. You mustn't be trying to be funded for doing the same work. Um, on the, but if it's a new technology that you're developing and it's a different project, then that's perfectly okay. And in fact, you can apply to multiple calls of NATEP. You could apply for the call that's open now in Innovate UK and into the Spring call, as long as the projects are different. Uh, that won't, that isn't a, a block to anyone applying into the system. And in fact, some of our projects have got Innovate UK funding or ATI funding and they've come to us. Um, obviously, the mentoring um, we still offer and as Stephen says we tailor it very much to the project so if you've got a lot of experience in that bid proposal we probably wouldn't help you so much at that stage but we would help you review it and, and polish it and get it as good as you can but if you've never written a bid in before you probably need more support and so the TM will tailor that support to you if that is where you need the help and support and guidance but also as Stephen said we'll help you with your if you're not sure who to collaborate with, if you're not sure who an end user will be, um, we can help you with those introductions so we can really help form the project. It's not necessarily just the written word, it's forming the project and developing that idea is how we can help. Thank you. I don't, I didn't see if there are any. We there have an, another question. Is this funding classed as notified state aid? That uh, we are within, I don't know what notified state aid is. I might have to come back to you separately. We are within the state aid requirements. Stephen's got his camera on, so he might be able to answer better. I think that question may be indicating whether or not it's de minimis or whether or not it's under the general block exemption. So it doesn't class as de minimis aid, it classes as under the general block exemption for state aid. So it doesn't um, come under your, um, I'm trying to remember, is it triannual limit for um, de minimis state aid? If that answers your question, Tessa, I'm not sure. There you go. Perfect. Thank you, Stephen.
Were there any other questions? We don't have any more at the moment. We'll just leave. Harriet, earlier on you did mention that the um, the new funding was available for a year, but that, that actually do, does still cover the length of a project that would last 18 months, doesn't it? Absolutely. Thank you, Nancy. Yes, once the project started, once you're contracted, if the com company, if the project lasts 18 months, it the, the year is to do with when they're awarding funding rather than when the project ends or the duration of the project. But thank you, Nancy, for clarifying that. Um, you should all have the slides um, from this presentation, the contact details of all of the technology managers and where they're based regionally um, are listed uh, on this slide. On our website, we've got um, some bios on the technology managers in the mentoring section. You can go and have a look if there's someone with this particular skill set that you're looking for, um, you can go to that particular TM. It doesn't matter if they're not in your region. Um, what we want to do is get you the TM that's going to be able to help you the most rather than the, the one that's necessarily closest to you geographically. Um, but obviously there is some common sense in having people that are close to you. Well, thank you very much. Uh, please go to our website, please contact us. Even if you've got an idea, even if you're not sure if we can help, um, drop us a line or give us a call and we will do our best to give you advice. As I say, even for this call that's currently open in Innovate UK, we can give you some advice. We've still got about four or five weeks. We could give you some really good advice in that time that would help your application. Thank you very much. I'll leave you to enjoy your Wednesday. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.